This is Healthy Souls with Father Nicholas Lowe, helping you to live a Christ-filled life in today's world. Father Nicholas is the pastor of St. John the Divine Greek Orthodox Church in Jacksonville, Florida. But several weeks ago, we began a new sermon series entitled, Taking the Next Step. And the reality is that every one of us, no matter how good of a person we think we are, there's always areas in our life that we need to improve. Areas that we too need to self-reflect and say, I need to make a difference and I need to take the next step. And not only us as individuals, but us as a church, and yes, as a society. We began the conversation talking about how I believe at my core that one of the areas that we need to work on, on as a society and take the next step in is in how we're raising our children. That we should be raising our children with godly characteristics and godly values. And that we're seeing a world that today has lost that core values and characteristics. And to you parents, I encourage you, go back and listen to that sermon. You can find all of our sermons on our website. And then we shifted last week to talking about something that is for sure prevalent in what's going on today. We talked about how we are called to make a difference. That we are the everybody that God is needing to help the somebody that's in our world. And then today I want to continue the conversation by talking about an area that, I don't, that no matter who we are and where we're from, we deal with this one struggle. I think every single one of us need to take the next step on this one area of our life. It's an area that most doctor's visits are, have their roots in this one area. In fact, studies are finding that most illnesses, even areas of cancer, have their roots in this one struggle that we all need to take the next step in. And that is, how do we cope with stress? How are we handling stress in our life? Several days ago, I was preparing for this sermon, and I wanted to kind of give you some areas of our life that we all can stress and suffer from stress from. And so maybe some of these you might deal with right now. One may be that you're stressed because you've lost a loved one, the stress of dealing with that. Maybe some of you are stressed because you have a confrontation with someone. Maybe you're in, involved in a conflict with relationships at home or at work. Maybe you got into a conflict on the way to church this morning. You don't need to raise your hand, but if you did, that might be stressful right now. And maybe you're in stress because of your marriage and where that marriage is. Or maybe you're stressed out about a deadline that you have tomorrow. Maybe there's legal problems that you're dealing with. Are you stressed yet? I don't know if you are. Maybe a job loss. Maybe you're going through a divorce. Money problems. Maybe an illness. Parenting. Come on, parents, you, you know what that's like. The pace of this life, we're so busy. Maybe retirement is stressful for you. Maybe the expectations in others. Maybe you're stressed about the Jaguar season. I don't know if that's the case. We'll find out in about a couple of hours. Maybe you're stressed about an unresolved conflict that you have in your life, an unresolved sin. But no matter who we are, we all face stress in our life. And for many of us, friends, if we're not careful, listen to this, for many of us, today was the tomorrow we were stressed out about yesterday. For many of us, today was the tomorrow you were stressed out about yesterday. And if we're not careful, friends, instead of us offloading that stress to God, we can onload it. Instead of bringing it to God, we can carry it. And I want you to understand this important principle that you will never experience God's peace for your life if you keep allowing stress to control your life. I love etymology. It's the study in the origins of a word. You know what the word, the origins of the word stress come from? It literally means to choke, to strangle. And some of us can't experience God's peace in life because we're allowing stress to choke our life. In the Gospel of Matthew, chapters 4, 5, and 6, is called the Sermon on the Mount. In chapter 6, if you're one of these people that are stressed, and if you're watching us online right now and you've got a stressor on you, maybe open up your Bible and look at the Gospel of Mar uh, Matthew, chapter 6. But that whole chapter 6 is all about stress and worry. And at one point he says this, and he's was, was asking really a rhetorical question, but he's asking to all of you, and it's a question that you should ask yourself every single day. He says, which one of you, 
this is Jesus speaking now, has added an hour to your life by being stressed. All the stress that we're worried about, all the things that we're trying to do in our life, which one of us have added an hour? And then he goes on to say, no, let the troubles and the stress of tomorrow be for tomorrow. Simply be and live in this moment. Like just simply living in this moment. And so there's three areas that I want you to kind of focus on. I'm going to call them the PTA. The PTA are the areas that I believe at my core are areas that you can work and that you can utilize that can help you when you're dealing with the stressors of life. Here's number one. Pray. Pray. I love the month of September. In fact, I think that the smartest, the greatest people have their birthdays in September. It's just a great month, and I don't know why I'm saying that, but I'm just saying that that month is just a great month. But to be honest with you, today is a birthday. September 8th is the Virgin Mary's birthday. We know December 25th, but September 8th is her birthday. And if you study her life, whenever she was going through a moment of stress, you know what she did? She prayed. As a teenager, she simply prayed. For example, when the archangel Gabriel came and said to her that you're going to bear a son, and he's going to be called the God of all gods, that he is going to lead the people, what does Mary do? She, initially, she's like, what, me? I, I'm, I'm a virgin. And then immediately after that, she gets there and she says, you know what, God, I am your servant. I want you to lead my life. That's what Mary says. Her immediate shift was not to control her life, but it was to simply pray. And many of us, the moment that we face stress in our life, it's almost an innate knee-jerk reaction is to try to control it, to try to maneuver and to try to set things up. The problem with this is that many of us never find peace doing it on our own. And instead of prayer being the first response, for many of us, prayer is a last resort. This was on display this past week when the hurricane was coming. Many of us were starting to think when we saw this Hurricane Dorian a couple of weeks coming towards us, that yes, there was this innate desire to just try to control and try to see what was going to happen and to model and to try to maneuver things to do it. And then at the end of the day, it was like, well, we just need to pray. And many of us were praying because this hurricane, we didn't want it to hit us. And my encouragement for all of you is that when you're facing situations in your life, a true test in your walk of faith is when you shift to prayer and not to control. That I'm just going to pray to you, God. I'm going to lean into you to get me through it. Here's the second one. We pray about all things. Number two is we trust God in all things. It's interesting in the Bible that the one of the most commonly stated statements by Christ is two words. Those two words are fear not. And why does Christ spend so much time telling you and me, stop being afraid, stop being stressed? Because he knew that the devil's playground was your mind and that you would spend more time talking about stress and worry instead of on God. And it's interesting, in the book of Philippians, St. Paul, who is writing this book while in prison, about ready to have his head, and about ready to be decapitated and executed, he says this, In all things, I come to God, and I present those stresses before Him. And I trust in Him, because He cares, listen to this, for me. How many of us, when we face those struggles, immediately say, God, I'm just simply trusting in you. I know that you're going to get us through this. It's a true walk of faith to take that next step and say, God, I'm just simply trusting you. Pray, trust. Here's number three, attitude. You have to recognize, friends, that your mind controls the way in which you live your life. And the way in which you approach your life, the attitude that you have, the thoughts that you put in your mind can either make that stress go away or it can help you manage through it. And many of us, I will have to tell you this, that we, are, we fall short in this one area. We can pray, we can try ourselves to trust in God, but the devil doesn't give up, so when he keeps giving us that stressor and we keep entertaining it, 
It allows us to fall short. Well, Father Nick, what are those areas that we need to stop thinking about? Let me give you two areas that I think that we all need to do a little bit less of. One, the news. Stop watching so much news. Some of the leading factors of stress is the news. If you watch the news long enough, the world's coming to an end. And many of us, we don't realize it, are just soaking this up. Some of you that are watching us online have it on the news from the morning to the night. Sometimes in my own life, I will tell you this, I go through seasons of fasting from the news. What would it be like if you just simply fasted from the news? The same storyline that's going on this week was the same storyline three weeks ago. It's continuously, and many of us are carrying that stress. Another area that I would tell you that we need to worry about is keeping up with the Joneses. The stress of competition, of looking what other people have or how happy they are and wishing we had that same happiness. No, run your own race. Be who God wanted you to be. Don't allow that stress to come on you. It's attitude. It's having the right kind of attitude. I leave you with this. In the late in the late 90s when I was at the seminary, I have to be honest with you, there was an area, there was a time when I was at the seminary that was extremely stressful. Um, area that, a time where I was, just wasn't connecting with my schoolwork, it was kind of hard to stay focused. In addition to that, it was extremely difficult to kind of get connected to the people that were in the seminary because we were all kind of trying to do our best academically. It was a very stressful time for us. And I'll be honest with you, one of the things that I oftentimes did, and this was just one of those things that happened to work this time, I don't suggest you doing it, but I was like, I need a Bible verse. I need a verse that I need to connect to. And so I did what some of us oftentimes do. Just close your eyes and open the Bible and put your finger on a verse. This is the one time that it worked for me. I opened the Bible and I put my finger on a verse from the book of Psalms, chapter 34, verses 19. It's a verse that I would encourage all of you to go home and read. And I have written that. It's on my nightstand at home. It's a verse that whenever I find myself stressed, I read this. This is what it says. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of them all. And if you study the etymology of the word affliction, it is from a Hebrew word that spoke about how the Assyrians used to tie someone to a pole when they would torture someone. And then they would tie them to a pole with their hands in the back, having them stand up, and then they would start putting rocks all around them, one after the other, building up to their body. Eventually, the weight of those rocks would crush that soul, would crush that body. And for many of us, one of those rocks that we're stressed about is our finances. One is the news. One is the world. One is the way in which we see situations happening. And what we don't realize is those afflictions, those rocks that are coming against us, are crushing us. And I just want to give you encouragement today. The Lord delivers them out of them all. He delivers them out of them all. So go home being encouraged, because you will find stress today. Stress is a part of life. But don't onboard it. Offboard it. Don't carry it, bring it to God. That you'll never experience God's peace in your life if you keep allowing stress to choke. We invite you to join Father Nick and his wife, Dr. Roxanne Lowe, on the second and fourth Tuesday of every month for their Healthy Minds, Healthy Souls call-in show at 8 Eastern, 7 Central on Ancient Faith Talk.